friends, just making sure you know the tickets for our live shows in December are on sale now. We have two shows this time, one that's in person in Los Angeles at the Bourbon Room and one online December 4th. And for the online one, we even have a special gingerbread making after party. So make sure to not miss that. Link for the tickets is in the description and we cannot wait to see you there. Perfect, okay. perfect, perfect. <sighs> Unlike these stories we're about to read today. Yeah. Yeah. I Oh, perfect. Unlike the stories. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I was waiting for you to finish. <laughs> I was like, Unlike the stories we're about to read today. That's where I was like, Oh <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? Okay, so you've I was saying perfect, perfect, perfect. And you were like, unlike the stories that we're gonna read today. Yeah. And I thought you were saying, unlike the stories that we're gonna read today, this drink is really nice. Like Oh, is that the sound? No. Dude, okay. I'm broken. We're, we're, yeah, <laughs> we're not connecting here. We're just, t- this is us. Two Ooh. wavelengths running parallel, not intersecting. <laughs> no. No. Not perpendicular no. today. No, 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 no. I'm broken. I like don't, I don't know. I made the mistake of scheduling recording on a Wednesday when I know Wednesdays are my editing days. Yeah, that's and weird. That's a weird move by you. Who, I had to get it in. Yeah. I had to get it in. And, um, Recording today, recording Sunday. Oh, Monday. Recording Monday, <laughs> recording Tuesday. I'm just like, oh f- man, rec- f- just fuck me up with these sessions. Let's go, baby. Let's but go. gotta get ahead, you know, gotta get ahead. You're in touch. Have some stories in the bank. There you go. But so this theme, I, you know, it, it kind of has evolved over the course of its, its folder life. <laughs> so I started the folder. And it originally started as like, what's the point? Like, what is the fucking point? Because sometimes <laughs> you read these stories and you're just like, are you happy? Because you don't sound very happy. So why, 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 why? Like, why keep putting yeah. yourself through this? Yeah. This turmoil. Yeah. And so it started <laughs> off as that. And then I just kept finding them. And then it was like, oh, my God, I'm starting to feel like stressed for these people in these stories. And then you told me you uh-huh. were feeling a little stressed. Yeah. Having some night sweats. Yeah. Just not doing well. And I was Correct. like, I was like, okay, well, I'm I have a goal where I wanna like I I have this goal where I'm hoping that these stories are so stressful that they'll make you forget about your stress. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell is this? Well, okay, this is a bait and switch. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you kidding me? So it's it's interesting. So, a lot of times people will tell me, "What the fuck?" <laughs> no, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, I'll hear you out. So a lot of I'll times, let you <laughs> so a lot of times people will tell me, you know, on the comments on the YouTube, they're like, "Thank you so much. This made me feel so much better. I've yeah. been going through it. Yeah, these stories are way worse than my life." <laughs> okay. And so it's that co- it's it's that concept in real life here. We're testing it. <laughs> I'm down bad, aren't I? You have to like pull out <laughs> stressful stories to make me feel less stressed out about my like, yeah. problems. What if my problems are worse than these? What well, if that's how bad you're it fucked. is? Yeah. <laughs> so this could be really bad. And you, so just get back to send you to adult happy camp or something. Clearly. Oh, I'm happy. I'm a happy I don't think happy and stress. Unless these people are unhappy, but like I don't think happiness and stress correlate. No, I I think they absolutely can correlate, but I don't think that they're mutually exclusive. I think you can have a lot of stress and still be like a happy person. I feel that. That's me right now. Yeah. Like there is, there is like (laughs) daily. (laughs) Yeah. There's a state of stress and then there's having stress. And there's the same thing with anxiety. You can be anxious or you can have anxiety, experience anxiety. Yeah. And so I think with stress, like I have maybe had higher levels of stress due to external circumstances, right? That sign. All day, every day. All day, every day. It's going soon. Okay. Sad. Bye. Really? I'll put it up in a garage or something. <laughs> it can go, you, it can uh, go above a you bar. You look like, a, like a, a dad that gives no fucks, like drinking his beer. And you're just like... Mm-hmm. Drinking a beer, mm-hmm. my Harley shirt. Yeah, look at this suburban dad. 
I am giving dad vibes. Dad. And I want you to rewatch your facial expression when you were talking. You, <laughs> you don't go above the bar. Yeah, let's let the boy live. Like, <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> Put it in the man cave. <laughs> exactly. That's, That's like, God. God, that was your vibe. That's a lady the vibe. <laughs> I hate the sign. Okay. Anyway, so Morgan and I are operating about, on about two brain cells and three tears. <laughs> Maybe so, one. Like, <laughs> combined. Yeah. Two combined. Exactly. Two combined. Yeah. So I think uh, we'll be putting that to the test today. I'm hoping it kind of works on me too. I've been been dealing with some anxiety. So That's um, why I brought you a cheesecake. Oh my God. I literally <laughs> I I'm I'm surprised I didn't break down in tears. Oh my god. I've been thinking about it all day today. Seriously? All day. I was like, when am I gonna be able to go to Whole Foods? If you guys shop at Whole Foods, <laughs> please, 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 please do yourself a favor. There's these baby, baby, tiny, like the size of a a coaster, baby coaster, jumbo Oreo cookie. I don't know. But it's petite, you guys. It's a petite it's, cheesecake. It's petite. So it's a petite <laughs> pumpkin cheesecake. And it is to die for. It's really good. I literally put, um, after I went to Whole Foods randomly <laughs> for lunch, I put every girl I know in a group chat and I go. There's like four girls. There's like four girls. I don't have a lot of friends anymore. Shut up. Shut up. No. My group chat ability has shrunk. No, you read the room though because everybody was hyped. Oh, everyone. I, I picked the right crowd for sure. And so I sent it. I sent it to everyone as a PSA and I was like, PSA, please go to Whole Foods and get this pumpkin cheesecake. Of course, everyone reacts very well. Of course I ran. Alejandra <laughs> ran there. Ran to Whole Got Foods. it. Immediate text back. This cheesecake fucks. Yeah. <laughs> like it is so good. So do yourself a favor. Mini pumpkin cheesecake uh-huh. from Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. It's worth it. It is. I'll second that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Uh, but again, today's theme don't know a title yet. Maybe we'll come to it by the end, but it has something to do with <laughs> secondhand feelings. <laughs> okay. Like, are secondhand feelings valid? Are secondhand feelings a thing? Can you catch feelings from Reddit posts? What so, do you mean? Like, you know how there's like secondhand smoke? Like, people, yeah. Yeah. So, secondhand feelings. Like, this is not my situation, but oh. like, I'm fucking stressed for them. Oh, that's really interesting. I'm mad for them. Mm-hmm. So, like, secondhand feelings. Mm. Okay. I like what you're doing here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're onto something. Let's dive in, baby. Okay. Let's do it. I'm your host. Oh, God. Yet again, huh? <laughs> Hi, guys. And welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. I'm your host, Morgan. And I'm Alejandra. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, 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 woo. Nailed it. C- crushed that one. <laughs> okay, so up first we have, I might be responsible for my brother having a baby at 16. Okay. I feel horrible just typing this, but I really need to get this off my chest. My brother, 17, and I get into fights, which I believe is normal between siblings. But on this particular day, he made me so mad. I had never gotten so angry before that I went to his drawer where I knew he kept his condoms and I sat there and poked holes in most of them with a needle. I ended up forgetting about it, but then the following year, he told us his girlfriend was pregnant. My dad was so upset and kept asking him why he didn't use protection. And my brother just kept saying he did. I immediately remembered what I did, and I felt awful. The baby lives with us now, and I feel like I ruined all of their lives. I think about it all the time and how what I did was so wrong, and I feel incredibly guilty. That's it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, I feel like that one goes without being said. So bad? Like, Like, yes, you should feel like an asshole. That's assault. That's wrong on so many levels. I mean, here's the thing. A baby is a beautiful thing. I'm sure that they're very happy and they've welcomed this baby into their lives and it's a blessing, I'm I'm sure, you know? But that's kind of taking control of somebody else's fate and dictating their future in a way. Absolutely. So I think that's extremely messed up. I think you should feel guilty. But at the same time, guilty might not be the right word because... A beautiful life came out of it. And I guess I don't know how they, the attitude towards the baby. I don't know if they go on to say that, but. Uh, username's been deleted. I don't see any comments by OP. So nothing. No other info. I can't. That's crazy. I can't imagine being so mad at someone that I would 
do something like that. And like mm-hmm. we've had stories in the past where, you know, mother-in-laws have poked holes in condoms to get their their daughter-in-law pregnant. Mm-hmm. Like we've had that. Um, and Still that's, messed up. They're all <laughs> fucked up. Like don't poke holes in people's condoms. Because like 16, the whole trajectory of their life has changed. Who knows if they would have even stayed together? Who knows if yeah. they would have chosen to have kids? Right. Like their whole life is forever changed. And not saying that they won't like succeed in the same way, but they're definitely going to struggle more. Yeah. Like having a kid is no easy feat, especially yeah. at 16. Um, top comment on this one. What the fuck? And someone replies to it and goes, good use of the sub though. Because it is, like, the confession sub. Yeah. (laughs) That's a good point. Someone else goes, girl, what the fuck? You're going to have one guilty conscience if if you aren't giving him child support. People get sexual assault charges for this, you know? Yeah, I I was wondering if there's any type of implications for doing that. I think the mother-in-law in in one of the cases, like, had been charged. Really? So some people are calling it, like, it's a form of intimate partner violence— Some people are kind of saying it could be prosecuted under, like, reproductive coercion. But then there's, like, another line in this that, like, however, it is not a crime, Mm. even though ACOG says it should be. ACOG. Yeah. American. American. American College of Obstetricians. Oh, I've never known how to say that word. That's a word I've gotten, like, very far in life without ever having to, like, actually say. No, that's why you just say OBGYN. Exactly. I've never had to say that word. Never. I've never said it out loud either. Wow. That's a lot coming from you. (laughs) No, you just say, like, oh, the OB. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Which is already... Anyway. um, Yeah, it's interesting because I do remember there, like, that coming up in a conversation about, like, pressing charges. And I thought one of the stories did, but... I don't know. I'm not seeing the fact that, like, I don't see anything on Google thus far from scrolling that says it is illegal. Well, it just seems incredibly difficult to prove. I would, Incredibly yeah. difficult. Because how can you argue that it wasn't ripped during intercourse or that there wasn't somehow a faulty condom that already had a hole? Like, there's just so many variables that can't necessarily be accounted for. Unless somebody explicitly says, I poked a hole in a condom. But even then, it's just a lot of gray area. But, I mean, that's not the point of this to be, like, a looking at this from a legal lens. I think it's so messed up. And, honestly, those are the types of stories that you know are passed on and, and essentially turn into, like, scare tactic stories. Like, because what if that girl was on birth control, right? Yeah. And now they're going to tell all their friends, oh, I still got pregnant. I know. Even on birth control. And he used a condom and now everyone's like, oh my God, you can't trust birth control. or whatever. Or like, oh, we used a condom and I still got pregnant. And now everyone's questioning like the safety of those things. Those are the yeah. horror stories you hear. And I wonder how many times like somebody poked a hole in the condom and that detail was left out. Yeah. Just the fact he's got to be stuck feeling like that. I think yeah. like wondering like, well, we did everything right. right. Like, and it still happened to us yeah. Like to have that feeling where it's like, oh, right. But you know what? Everything happens for a reason. I think. You know, it's hard to say based on the very little detail we have what their lives look like today and the relationship with the child. Mm -hmm. But something tells me that that child was meant to be here through whatever wicked way they were brought into the world. And hopefully that that's just the lens that they look at it from is like, yeah, hey, everything happens for a reason. You're here like blessing in disguise vibes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll definitely work out. Sounds like the family's super supportive and the baby's living with them, which is great. Exactly. They have help. So, yeah. But fuck that sister. Yeah. I can't imagine. You have to be very evil to do that. One, to anybody, period. And then two, to do it to your own brother who's a minor. That's... I know. Honestly, it seems so wicked. Oh, yeah. And they didn't put their age. And I wonder what their age is, if they're younger or older. If they're older, extra fuck you. Yeah. But it's giving uh, slug boy vibes. The one who was poisoning his girlfriend? Yeah. And there's, like, another person that um, we covered on the Patreon who, like, poisoned their friend with laxatives because oh, they didn't want their friend I, I to do I better. I that story, yeah. That on, was like, a, a test. Patreon, was it? I think it was. I heard this story, though. I think we ended up moving it to Patreon. Oh. Um, for those, like, that are listening and they're like, what? You never talked about that. But, um, yeah, it was, like, a story, essentially, where mm-hmm. this girl yeah. or this person was, like, poisoning their friend and with laxatives. And they admitted it. 
But I think there is like a common denominator when like you're capable of doing terrible calculated shit like this. Right. Because like, yeah, okay, you poked holes and then walked away. But like, that's not something I would forget about. No. And I so, mean, clearly they didn't either because here they are. A year later wondering. Yeah. But I think you make a good point. I do think it takes a certain type of consciousness to be able to do these things and walk away and not let it eat you alive. I could never do anything even rem- I'm not I'm such a karma believer that absolutely I'm so scared that even if I'm like so angry at someone I don't ever think about doing something to get back at them because I just know that somehow some way that energy will come back to me in a negative form it does you know I, I truly believe that wholeheartedly I, I do as well so I could never do something like that ever I no. mean it just it, it like you said it changes the trajectory of somebody's entire life I know two people's lives I know. I just like, I I fully believe in karma. I just totally, it's not worth it. It's energy. It's like you're Mm -hmm. channeling this negative energy. And I think at one point or another, most of us in life have done something reactive out of anger, whether we were children, whether we were adults, like you've done something like your brother pisses you off. So you go trash his Xbox. We've all done it in relationships. Your boyfriend likes a girl's photo. So you go out to the bar and like hit on a guy like Tit for tat mentality is a little bit instinctual, I think, as humans. The difference is the people who can reflect and feel bad about it and the people who can say, like, I don't feel bad. I double down on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it sounds like I want to say she has remorse because she's running. I don't know. Yeah. First line is I feel horrible just typing this. Okay, But I really need to get it off my chest. It sounds like there's a little bit of guilt here. Oh, yeah. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign. (sighs) Time to help out. Change some diapers, pay some child support. At that point, I mean, if it were me and it's hard to put myself Take it to the grave? No, I don't think I can take anything to the grave. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think I can take anything to the grave. But I don't even know. Something like that, I think I would feel like I'm living my whole life indebted. Mm. The whole, like... Anytime that child needs help, I would feel like it's on me. Jump, yeah. Yes. I could see that. You know? I could see it. Okay, moving along. Yeah. Am I the asshole for tolerating a night out with my girlfriend? Earlier this year, I gifted my girlfriend, 33 female, tickets to a concert that she really wanted to go to. That was this past Friday night. I'm, 36 male, not a fan of her music, nor the fact that this concert was in the city. But I wanted to make it a great gift. She was elated when I told her that I bought the VIP package, meet and greet, pictures with the band, etc. Last week, my girlfriend began asking if we had to get to the venue early. Being the thorough, detailed person that she is, I assured her I would check. Instead, I was too busy with work. Honestly, it was getting a bit annoying that almost every few days she would ask. So I told her I didn't see anything while deleting a bunch of emails from the venue for concerts I don't even care about. On Friday afternoon, she told me that she had tried looking things up and was only finding that the doors opened at 7. With that, I picked her up at 6 and arrived at the venue for 7. Once inside, she showed security our ticket and asked about the meet and greet. The bouncer informed us that the VIP was at 6. I froze. Now, my girlfriend turns to me asking if I received any kind of emails. The tickets were in my name. I told her that I deleted emails and she seemed to understand. I actually really enjoyed the whole time. So once her band set ended, we decided to not stay for the last band. And this is where the trouble began. It's 10 p.m. We're outside of the venue and she suggests we go to a bar a block away and either walk or ride share. I immediately said there was not a chance. She mentioned that my car was in a secured lot and we wouldn't be far, but I lost my cool, which I admit was not the best way to go about things and told her, quote, you don't go out in the city. There's crime all over the place. She responded that we were in the city. I went off how I can't stand it here. So she said that we'll just leave. No raising of her voice. She just said she was fine with leaving. She was silent on the way back. And I suggest that we go back to my place to finish out the night. And she refused. This also pissed me off because I asked what was wrong with the bar next to my apartment, and she shut that down with her short responses. Overall, the night cost me over $300, and while she is saying more to me now as opposed to Friday night, she is being very distant. 
She told me she could live with not going to the meet and greet, except for how things turned out afterwards. And that is when the disappointment truly set in. My response was that I was only bringing her to the concert, nowhere else, and thinking of her safety. She continued that I shouldn't have bought the tickets if I was only tolerating doing so. I do accept that I made some mistakes, chiefly with making us miss the meet and greet. The timing of the concert should have made this an unforgettable experience since her grandmother just died. Am I the asshole? Honestly, I think so. Mm-hmm. And not just for the reason that he thinks he's the asshole. I think so many things he did in that story made him an asshole. And I feel for this girl so much because I'm very type A and I always want details and logistics. And I would be the neg. I don't even want to say nagging girlfriend. I think that's just like totally fair to be asking what time do we need to be there? What are the details? Like you're getting the emails, you're getting the updates. And the fact that he was like, I thought it was kind of annoying Dude, your girlfriend is really excited about this. Like you said she was elated, quote unquote, about this experience that you bought for her. And you're annoyed that she asks you every couple of days. Like that's her excitement. And that's (laughs) annoying to you. Like what? I think that's just so shitty. And then the response that the girlfriend had, I've been there. And I think a lot of girlfriends can probably relate to that where Mm -hmm. you are so hurt and disappointed that you pretty much just shut down. Uh, Yeah, they could ask you to go to like Disneyland and you'd probably just not even be in the mood for it. Like you're so far gone. You're so far disappointed. He they've already let you down so much that nothing sounds good anymore. He already like kind of made her miss this very important experience that could have totally been avoided. But he was careless about it and then kind of puts a damper on the rest of the night and freaks out on her for suggesting to go to a bar. Mm -hmm. I feel like she was just over it. Yeah, I think that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. And it's hard because, like, this could have gone so well, right? Like, yeah. this could have been the perfect thing. And it's, it's, you know, some people are like, well, it's the thought that counts. And I'm like, mm, I don't agree with that, though, because it's it's all about the execution, too, right? Yeah. Don't do something just to do it. Like, if you're mm-hmm. going to do something nice for someone, go into it with the energy that is going to, like— match theirs right Mm -hmm. like don't just get someone a gift and then just be like "Mm, yeah like I'm not crazy about it but here you go yeah because otherwise what's the point yeah and I think like you said too it's like she's not even like she's just being normal yeah like she's excited she's asking questions and if if you're so bothered by the email it's easy to forward them to someone yeah or you know what you already told her about the surprise you should have put the tickets in her email yeah so then she can manage it if you already know you're not the type of person to do that yeah that it just makes me sad on a lot of levels because it's I think that although this seems like one night one event this to me signals that he's just her interests like don't matter that much to Mm -hmm. him and it makes me genuinely sad for this because I've been there where I'm excited about something and I'm following up with someone whether it was a friend or a relationship and they're kind of shutting it down and being like you're annoying like stop asking me and it's like take a second and think about why I'm asking you do you think I just woke up today and I decided let me text you 20 times because I feel like it No, it's because I'm excited about this and I want to make sure that all the ducks are in a row. Mm -hmm. And it's when you look at it from that lens, it's like, okay, she's just like being almost like a little kid because she's so excited. Pat on the back that you were able to give her an experience that she's so excited about that she can't stop asking. Wouldn't you rather that than her be ungrateful and be like, shrugging and just not care? Yeah, it's like, it's the reaction you want. It's the reaction you want. It's, uh, yeah, the, the, everything about that is really sad. If I were her, I'd feel really, really bummed out. I agree. There, the point too, where he's like, overall, the night cost me over three hundred dollars, and it's yeah. I think three hundred dollars, honestly, for a concert ticket and a meet and greet experience, and like if they got drinks at the venue, like three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it's like a lot of money for a lot of people, but like that seems like a pretty good value. Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously, it's all relative to your finances and wherever you are. $300 for some people could be like months of saving and $300 for some people could be like just not even blink at it. Yeah. So I I get it. Like to that, to him, maybe $300 was a lot of hard work and I feel for that. But here's the problem that I have with it, whether it's $300 or $3,000. He fucked the experience. He fucked the experience. So it's like you're, if you want a bitch about spending the money, yeah. like you could have just bought the concert tickets right. if you were going to be an asshole, right. a little bitch and make her miss the meet and greet. Exactly. Or what bothers me about that is I hate when people 
spend for for you or something for you and then hold it over you. You shouldn't have ever spent if you were gonna throw it back, like mm, you it's know almost what I mean? like he expects something in return. Yeah, once you've like, spent that yeah. money, you that's goodwill. You have done you that's done. Yeah. Now if you're expecting something in return, that's not kindness. That's like a transaction. So yeah. I spent three hundred dollars on this night. One, you've soured it yourself. So if you should be mad at anybody, you should be mad at yourself. Yourself. And two, don't spend money on a gift or an experience for somebody if you're going to be upset with the outcome. You should spend the money and know that anything can happen, but you're okay spending the money because mm -hmm. you want to give that person that experience. You know, it's like spending money on a gift and someone doesn't love it. That's a bummer, but you took a chance by spending that much money on someone's gift. Yeah, well, and it it's kind of goes with that rule of like, don't give a gift if you expect anything in return. Right, because exactly. Because then it's not a gift. Exactly. So you were not gifting her this experience if you were going to get sour about it and then... no. There are a lot of comments from OP, so I will Ooh. try to remember to post the link for this one. Okay. Um, overall vote on it was you're the asshole. The top comments are like red box, highly awarded, lots of upvotes. Uh, you're the asshole. You deliberately deleted emails despite knowing she wanted to be sure of the details because you found it annoying that she asked. As a result, she missed what was almost certainly the main part of the gift for her, yeah. the chance to meet the artist which was also the point of buying the VIP package. So you wasted your money too. Yeah. It's like jokes on you. <laughs> it's like sticking your hand in a dog's mouth and then complaining you got bit. Exactly. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Then you patronizingly told her that there wasn't a chance you'd do something else when she was trying to salvage some measure of specialness out of her ruined night. Bingo. You made an ignorant and bigoted generalization that cities are full of crime, acted like a petulant child when she didn't want to go to the bar near your apartment, which isn't exactly a special or memorable thing to do mm -hmm. if you go there all the time. Mm -hmm. And finally, you misrepresented the whole thing as being about you mm -hmm. not being sufficiently enthusiastic about the band. Yep. This isn't about you tolerating the night out. It's about you ruining it. The fact your girlfriend just got quiet and withdrawn instead of pushing back worries me that you've got a history of yep. losing your cool that makes her afraid for her safety if she speaks out. There might be some merit to that. Ma okay, maybe. Maybe. I'm not discrediting that. Yeah. But the reason I don't, I think we need to be careful with that is because I have been in this situation where a boyfriend has soured an entire evening for me and I got so disappointed that I was like, I had the exact reaction of her mm -hmm. and there was no history of like abuse or fear for like my safety. It's more just like you are so utterly disappointed that you just shut down. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that is not true. Yeah. I just don't want to say that that is the only reason why she could have acted that way. But it's something to consider. Yeah. And also the he raises another point that I wanted to touch on. I'm like, I'm not done bitching about him. The crime in the city. The crime in the city. Okay. Everyone talks about Minneapolis like that. And it's. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's period. Exhausting. Like whatever you think, whatever. That's fine. That's your opinion. Every city is going to have crime. That's just no matter where you go. Then don't go to a concert in the city. If, if it's so crime ridden. Yep. Stay away from the city. Same with games. Don't even go to the concert. Why did you pick the concert? Pick something else. Go stay in your hometown. I hate when people do the shit like that. They're like cherry pickers. Yes. Yes. They want to do something and it's like, uh, it's okay, but that's where I draw the line. It's like, but if the city itself is unsafe, then the crime does not red line. So the concert venue is no different than the bar across the street. Crime is crime. It does not, no borders. It's the same calculated risk. Correct. It's the same radius. Yeah. So just stay out of the city then if that's your argument. I agree. I hate when people do that. I know there's a lot like I think it's really hard because like everyone's like I think it's like COVID definitely like heightened crime everywhere. Yes. Like people are struggling more. There's yes. more robberies. There's more this. There's more that. Like it's totally COVID has definitely changed, you know, crime stats. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, also people like I don't know. I just like I hear it all the time where it's like, oh, you shouldn't go downtown Minneapolis. Like people are getting shot. And it's like I, I live in LA. Yeah. Like that's every day here every, too. Every day. Chicago. Yeah. That's every day in Chicago. And yeah. it's not right. It shouldn't no. happen. It's yeah. sad. But also like, that's just kind of like a major city. You're always going to have stuff in a major city. Yeah. I agree with that. And I'm in no way arguing the stat. Whatever city they are in could very well be crime ridden and very unsafe. Mm -hmm. My point is then you shouldn't even be there at all. Yeah. If that's what you truly believe, stay out of the city altogether. Solid, solid. 
Yeah, a lot of comments from OP though. Um, someone goes basically highlighting the fact I assured her I would check, which you didn't. Which you didn't. Instead, I was too busy with work. So someone responds to his point he made and goes, I mean, at this point of the story, you're already a total jackass. <laughs> yeah. I find it hard to believe an actual person would write that sentence. You go out in the city and in the comments, you explain you work in the city and you had your fill of the city. Well, she hasn't. You really do just think about yourself. And they go on to say a bunch of other stuff and OP responds and goes, this is 100% real. I own that I totally fucked up on Friday night. The look on her face when the bouncer told us that the meet and greet was an hour before was a mixture of surprise, then sadness. Mm. The bouncer pointed us towards the merchandise table where our VIP package, a tote bag with VIP only merchandise, was stowed away. She lit up because we both received one. On Saturday, she told me that she didn't want to come off as ungrateful because overall she was happy we were there. Up to that point, she accepted the, that mistakes happen. She brought up that when we were sitting in my car when she was going through the tote bag, did I remember when she found the VIP lanyard? That for her was when it sunk in how disappointed she was and she was too upset to speak to me. Hmm. That's really sad. I think that the girlfriend is being very charitable. Oh, yeah. I think that he is was a major asshole. I, I don't think I would have let him off as easily, to be honest with you. I just like don't understand why he even wrote in because yeah in the comments like he literally someone goes you're the asshole in such a large way yeah. the whole i just deleted the emails and told her whatever because she was asking too much about what time to be there is such a what the fuck moment anyways and so op responds my girlfriend does value herself she is one of the most selfless compassionate and non-confrontational people i know the issue is less about her standards which are quite high and more how massively i fucked up and I accept that our relationship may or may not ever truly recover from this. Wow. So it's like, did it really take you Reddit to realize? Like, even typing it out, like hearing what he typed out, like, I just deleted the emails. You were so careless. Yeah. You really didn't care to even just glance at an email. One thing to me is like missing an email, but you were fully deleting emails. Without even reading them. If I know. The anxiety that would give me. Yeah. If I know that I'm going to like a, an LA Lakers game, I know I'm going. I bought tickets and I'm getting emails about LA Lakers. I'm not deleting those. I'm reading every single one to make sure I'm not missing anything. So crazy. It's crazy. Don't bitch about how much money you spent because you flush it down the drain. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just, I really feel for her. I do too. Shit experience and she deserves better. Yeah. I think, I think he should run it back. I, if you genuinely, I mean. There'd there, be a mulligan. I think there's like deep rooted issues here though, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It signals to me more than just like you were careless one night. I think he's like maybe needs to rethink the way that he prioritizes her in his life and her interests. Yeah. But he definitely owes her more than a night out. I'll say that much. Yeah. I mean, just, I think it kind of, you know, everyone has their flaws and sometimes people can be self-centered and just not as self-aware as others. But like, mm -hmm. to give you an example, like I had Coachella tickets one year and went with like a girl's trip. And on the last night, I couldn't go see the headliners like I couldn't go that day at all because I had my last week of my like OT internship the next day mm -hmm. and so I was like I can't like I just can't do it mm -hmm. I'd already lost my voice I was mm -hmm. already a hot mess like I cannot go out and see Ariana Grande and I called like Justin and just like was just like crying about it like I was so sad because FOMO well she was just like my one of my favorite artists like still is up there and so it was so disappointing and he like was like you know, don't worry about it. Like, he's like, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to take you to Chicago. We're going to go to Lollapalooza mm. and we'll see her there. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, And so, so like, cute. literally we flew across the country and he took me to Lala and yeah. like, we went and saw her and it was amazing. So it's like, again, it kind of boils down. Like, if he wants to, yeah. he will. Yeah. And so it's like, if he lacks the bare, like, care for his girlfriend and her experience, like, just... Let her off the hook. Yeah. He needs Maybe she'll realize before. Yeah. I think she deserves better. I don't know. It's hard to say. We don't know that much about this couple. No. But <laughs> based on this isolated event, I'm not liking his vibe. I will agree with that. <sighs> Moving along. Okay. This is from True Off My Chest. 
I love that subreddit. I saw my husband and my sister naked in my kitchen. Okay. I can't move. If I move, it becomes real and I have to accept what I saw and think of what's next. I came home from work early and saw my sister's car thinking maybe she was dropping off some food from her job. But no, I walk in and see my husband and sister naked in my kitchen, the kitchen I paid for. As soon as I registered what I saw, I got into my car and left. I kept driving, just driving, driving, driving until I found the hotel I'm at now. I don't want to believe it. I don't know what to do. My sister, my only family, and my best friend, the one who's supposed to be there for me and support me, my husband, my person, my other half, the one who's supposed to love and respect me. The two most important people in my life have ruined everything. I've blocked them both on my phone. I don't want to hear any of the bullshit excuses they've come up with. I don't want to confront this. I want to go back to this morning when everything was fine. Well, you can't run from your problems. <laughs> I'll start there. Um, <sighs> that is really shitty. I'm a little confused. I don't think I could just get in my car and drive away. I think I would. <laughs> Why? Um, I have an example of like a time where I got really pissed off and I just like got in my car and left. So like, yeah, this is so dramatic. I can't believe I'm admitting this one. So Justin, like his dad bought this like super, super hot chocolate. Okay. But like, it's like hot, spicy? Yeah. It's like the, there's like a, the hottest chocolate in the world. It's like a bunch of like, there's a bunch of food that's like hot challenges. Wow. Yeah. And so his dad gave him like one little cube of this chocolate bar. And I told him, I was like, please, please let me watch you eat that. Like, just please, like, just come on. Like, don't do it without me. Yeah. And so like we were sitting there and like over the course of like two hours, him and his friend Jake were like, should we eat it? Should we not eat it? Should we eat it? And I was just like, okay, they're not going to eat it. Like whatever. So were you I, there? Yeah. I was at the house. Okay. And so I go into the room and like... This is so toxic. I can't believe I handled it this way. And so I go into the room and I'm just like hanging out and him and Jake, his friend, are still in the kitchen. And all of a sudden he comes in where he ate it and he's like, oh my God, it's so hot. And I go, you fucking did it without me. Like, <laughs> are you serious? I I literally just asked like so many times. I sat there for two hours yeah. waiting for you to eat this fucking chocolate and you did it without me. Yeah. I was just like, I just got to go. Like, I just need a minute. I got to go. Yeah. yeah. And so I like take my keys and go get in my car and like drive away. Okay. <laughs> that's actually not that bad. And I think that's fine. I think it's okay. Is Why? That, I was like pouting. It, that's okay. Is that the best response? No, but I think that's okay. I was so annoying. You took up, you needed a moment and you took it. That's yeah, okay. So I think that's like with this, it's like. No, it's not. And I'll tell really? you why. No, it's not. And I'll oh, tell you why. I just think I would, ha I would handle this the same way. Cause what else do you do? Kill them? No, kill you them. sit there. First of all, <laughs> why oh. would you drive away and give them a chance to create a narrative? Sit, th walk in and ask them what's up, what's going on? Watch them scramble to come up with a reason as to why they're standing like that. Like it's not out like a mat, like out of mat, like you know what I mean. Like watching people squirm, almost it's, satisfaction. Well, uh, I like, I just think that there's these situations can be so easily be manipulated, and when you, your emotions are so in it, you can gaslight yourself, and you can let others that you love so dearly, two mm -hmm. people that you trust and love so much, can really fuck with you mentally and gaslight you. So don't give them even the opportunity. Walk yeah. in there and just confront it. The difference between you and your situation is there was no gray area. You were upset. He did something. You left. When you come <laughs> back, the story is still the same. This is different. You left and you robbed yourself of the opportunity of pretty much confronting them in the act because they can just deny, 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 twist it. I don't know how you can deny being butt-ass naked in the kitchen with you your brother-in-law. would be shocked. The things people, oh my God. You won't believe what happened. This, a nest of fire ants fell into the kitchen. I mean, I, I mean like <laughs> you wouldn't believe this the things true. people yeah. can come up with. And I know it sounds crazy to you and I know we're laughing, but I, I'm serious. Well, I mean, like, yeah, weirder shit has happened. I know there's, there's yeah. no way to spin this. I mean, you saw what you saw. How do you really rationalize that? I get that. But you left and now it's kind of open to interpretation. And when you do have to confront this because you can only hide in that hotel for so long yeah you eventually have to come back to reality and face what you saw and now they can kind of like i don't know massage that and why just i don't know that is true i would love like i immediately like i just have this image 
of like her pouring herself a glass of wine and just yeah. like sitting in a chair yeah. staring at them with just like this like so yeah like, tell me tell me what yeah. what this is all about like yeah. that almost like the satisfaction of yeah. watching them squirm right that's like because that's all that's all you could get from that right is like uh, besides the heartbreak and the devastation yeah. and whatever but and that sounds evil <sighs> and that's not my point either like i'm not here to honestly though sometimes like create any more mm-hmm. chaos but mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, if that's your cup of tea, then sure, why not? I mean, at that point, you have nothing to lose. But I more so come from the perspective of I've just I've been in a situation where I've been so heavily gaslit and manipulated. And like, what do you mean? You didn't see that. Like, you didn't see this. And it's just so much easier when you can confront it and say, like, I'm standing right here. Make it make sense kind of thing. Yeah. And then it's harder. And you kind of yeah. it, allow, it gives you what you need to walk away and move on. That is true. And confront it. Now she's like going and spiraling and thinking of all the different narratives. And Yeah. Ugh. It is still up. Username is still there. Not deleted. Um, not suspended. Not removed yet. So yay. <laughs> um, the comment that OP responds to, the only one, is from someone that says the quote, my only family part is what hit me hard. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry, OP. And OP responds and goes, yeah, we cut contact with our abusive parents seven years ago. Thought we were supposed to have each other's backs always. Yeah. It's really sad. I mean, I know we just went on a tangent about how she handled it. And I don't mean to like victim blame or anything like that because it's missing the point. Like, yeah, she that that is incredibly fucked up. I can't even imagine the pain that you would feel and just like her, you know, escapism here is because that's so traumatic and painful that you can't even begin to process it. Because how do you move on after that? Like some, now you, well, like you are completely alone. You're completely alone. When your family wrongs you, you turn to like your partner. Your partner wrongs you, you turn to your family. But when your only family and your partner wrong you together. I don't get it. That's devastating. I, I, that's something like I really don't understand because it's like, there's so many other people on this planet and yeah. it's like, yeah, you obviously like you're going to feel connected to your brother-in-law, your your family. And like, yeah. especially if you cut off your parents, like you guys are close. I'm sure right. you're like three little amigos, but like to covet your sister's husband, like he's replaceable. She's not. That's your yeah. sister. <sighs> I will never understand that phenomenon. No. It's really weird. Yeah. Why people go after people who are taken or what i i don't know some people can join it yeah some people really do get satisfaction in being the other person yeah i think like the adam levine thing and the (laughs) the sonder girl or whatever her name was um i I think her coming out and being like i was the other woman i was dating a man that's married to a victoria's secret model (laughs) it's like you're you're proud because like what are you what are you coming out here what are you looking for right what are you looking for like yeah. I'll never, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I, I struggle with that. I struggle with like, why, why go for somebody that's dating, married, intimate with like your family member, your friends. I don't get that. I really don't. I just don't. I, I understand in like a little bit, like, oh, it's, it was a one night stand. Like you both were really drunk. You what? didn't, you didn't know he was married at the time oh, or whatever, oh, Okay, whatever okay. it is. But then like to go back again and again and again, it's like, He's supposed to be married to this person and you're the other person. Like, how would you, if you did want to turn that into a long-term relationship, how do you trust them? I Knowing what they did to their partner. Right. It's like that saying, like, you lose them how you get them or mm-hmm. something like that. I don't know. It's a phenomenon that just fascinates me because it happens so often. I, and I can't understand it. I genuinely can't. And I, I'm it's not wild. passing judgment. Like there has to be some type of psychological. There has to. Yeah. Because so many people fall into it. I know. You know, I know I can name at least a couple of people who I know personally have or are messing around with married people. And it's, I don't get the end game. Hmm? Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. <sighs> some people just need some fucking hobbies. <laughs> I got told I need some fucking hobbies. You're pretty busy, but like maybe I'm busy, but maybe some more cathartic Zen hobbies. Like, do you want to take a pottery class? I took ceramics in high school, and I wasn't really that good at it. But you don't have to be good to enjoy it. Mm, you've saw me freak out 
at the tie-dye party. You did really good, though. Your tie-dye tote was the best one. And did you see any of the other pieces? No. Why? Because they sucked. I need to see them to believe I'll them. You You're pictures. probably being too hard I, on yourself. No, I swear I had to throw the t-shirt away. It was actually so bad. I'm sorry. We would have given it to someone. <gasps> oh, wait. No, I don't think I did throw it away for that reason. You're right. I don't think I threw it away. Don't be wasteful. I'm sorry. It was just so bad. I don't do well with projects. Send me a picture when you get home. I don't believe you. I will. <laughs> you don't believe me? <laughs> We're giving it away. Don't okay. throw it away. Okay, okay, okay. Top comment on this one was unblock them and just let their calls go to voicemail. Turn the ringer off for each of them in your contacts. That way you can get recorded proof of their apologies and excuses via voicemail. You may need that type of proof for your divorce. Okay, that's another. Thank you. If you're mm-hmm. going to file for divorce... Like, I hate to be super transactional about these things. Because but at I this know, point, you kind of need to be. You have to, like, I said it on, like, the first episode I was ever on. Like, you need to build your case. Mm-hmm. You really do. And I'm sorry, but you, when all is said and done, you still have to face life. And if you're going to divorce this person, you have to leave this person. You have to have your story and your facts aligned. Yeah. So you could have caught them, maybe even snapped a photo. I know a lot of people don't have such an easy way to catch cheaters, but again, it's just yeah. so the fucking shock of it all. Like, oh I, yeah, no, I don't I know. know what I would do because, like, I I don't know. Like, Justin could technically cheat with my little sister, but there's quite the age gap between us, so it's like eight years. So that wouldn't happen. But it's I can't even imagine like walking on him with like one of my friends, and it's like that's what I'm thinking too. Like friends is like we're all close as we would yeah. be as family yeah. almost. So it's like yeah. I honestly, I might go back, get in my car and drive it into the house. Like, I, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> you, what what do you realistically think you would do? Um, I know it's a hard thing to think about. I but. do kind of stand with what I said. I think I would react in the very same way. Yeah. Because I think there's something also to be said, like, in, like, they don't know what you're doing when you drive away. And let them, like, let them feel guilty that you know. Let them have the anxiety of sitting there. Where is she? What's she going to say? How's she going to react? Mm-hmm. Is she okay? What's she doing? Because they do care about her. Yeah. Did they see her? I guess maybe I missed that detail. I think so. I thought she just saw them. And no, I think she definitely, like, walked away. in, saw them, and then, like, dipped out. Okay. Yeah. I guess I didn't know that. I yeah. thought that that kind of changes things then. I thought she saw them, like, yeah. in the movies where, like, they Through see them. Window. Yeah, and then you, like, leave. Yeah, no, I think I think they do know that she came in because of the fact that she blocked them. Mm. And I don't want to hear any of their bullshit excuses they okay. come up with. Yeah, that's okay. So it does sound like they're, like, going to call her and okay. all that jazz. Well, that changes things a little bit. I don't know what I would do. That's a hard place to put yourself in. And even if you think you know what you would do, your visceral emotions just kick in. Yeah. It's well, it's like your fight or flight yeah. response. You're it's like, oh, we have this like perfect delivery plan for when you go into labor. And then it's like, oh, it's happening. And like all that's our plan out the window. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know what I would do. I don't think I would leave. I don't think I'd like cause a rocket. I don't think you would leave. No, I don't I think, think I'd you leave. would literally immediately sit down and just stare at them. I think I would too. I think I'd pour myself a glass of wine and be like, "Am I interrupting? I'm so sorry. Should I leave?" Yeah, like I would. I'd probably just get sassy about it. I you absolutely would. Yeah, I can see it right now. Yeah, I'd be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Am I intruding? Should I come back later?" Whew. Well, I wish her the best. I'll keep an eye on this one for updates, and hopefully, we get some news that she's doing yeah. okay and better, and like. Again, like this is just us shooting the shit. Like, however, yeah. however anyone's going to handle yeah. their situation in like any of these stories, however they handle it, it's what's best for them in the moment. And so, yeah. there's no, there's no playbook. This is however you handle it is is the right way to handle it. But because- if you can slow down and do what Alejandra is suggesting, I do think it would uh, be very satisfactory at the end of the day. To what? To just sit just there sit with there. a glass of wine and watch them scramble to get their clothes yeah. and you're just like you fucking bitches you motherfuckers <laughs> take me for a fool i know just, i just oh i just feel anger for her but then again i don't know like i'm i'm acting all like big and bad but then that happens and it's like so hurtful and you're in shock that you just have to leave mm-hmm. so again we're not really passing judgment i can't imagine i have been i have experienced infidelity i have been fortunate enough to not have to witness it thank god 
But I can't imagine how hard that would be, especially with like two people that means so much to you. Yeah. No, thank you. <sighs> yeah. Up next, this one is definitely going to leave you with some strong feelings. So buckle up, y'all. Oh, shit. <laughs> Am I the asshole for not inviting my friend to my wedding because I didn't want to hurt her feelings? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, 25 female, am engaged to my fiancé, Nick, 38 male, and we are getting married in a few months at a beautiful old mansion house, which used to be next to a plantation. It's pretty local to us, and it's a stunning venue. It's been my dream venue that I've wanted to be married at ever since middle school, and I honestly didn't know the history of it until we started researching venues. Just to make sure everyone knows, I think slavery is disgusting and the history is horrible, but I think that we can try and bring good into the world by making happy memories and bringing positive things to these kind of places. I'm not here to debate my venue decision at all, and that's all I have to say. I have a very close friend, Adriana, also 25 female, who I've known since kindergarten and happens to be black. She is a very... She happens to be black? Just say she's black. That is weird. Just happens. No, just happens. Luck will have it. Like, what? Just she's black. Say it how it is. (laughs) She is very active in terms of black rights causes and campaign and campaigning, which I think is amazing, and I admire her for it. However, I know she would definitely not want to go to a wedding on a plantation, and that it would upset her a lot because she has different opinions from me and feels very strongly about the history of these issues. I decided not to invite her because I wanted to spare her any pain. Adriana reached out to me a few days ago for coffee and asked why she hadn't received an invitation when the rest of the group had, and whether I was planning on making a special invitation because she assumed she would be a bridesmaid. I tried to be really nice about it and gently explained to her why I hadn't invited her and told her that I never expected her to come and didn't want to throw it in her face. Adriana burst into tears and started yelling at me, in public, that why would I get married somewhere like that, and why would I exclude one of my closest friends just because I didn't want want her to make a scene at the wedding. She asked me if I would reconsider changing my venue because she would love to come, but I told her that after embarrassing me, I didn't think she could behave at a wedding. I think I just lost feeling in my jaw because I, like, My jaw dropped so hard. (laughs) She left and said that she needed time to think about the friendship, but I haven't heard from her since. The rest of my friend group and family think that I went about everything fine, but maybe a bit harshly. And Adriana just needs time to understand where I'm coming from. But some people who I invited and Adriana knows have RSVP'd no, and I'm worried. Am I the asshole? OP, you are not only an asshole, you should be fucking worried. Bro. You, you are an, a colossal asshole on so many levels. It is disgusting. It's repulsive. <laughs> just the ignorance, right? And like, yeah. I don't know if that's just the white privilege in all of this. I, are they white? Or Do what? we know? I guess the non- black she could be me like Like, you know she's obviously not black yeah otherwise i mean honestly we don't know that but but i i would i think it's a fair to venture to assume that she's not but again we don't know that yeah i'm gonna check comments quick and see if there's anything okay um there are quite a few comments okay i mean we obviously have a black uh she's white okay she says that yeah okay yeah someone goes I'll let okay essentially I should have included in the post I'm not black I'm white okay is got what it. her response and that's is. a fair assumption based on the context that we got I don't think I mean whatever we're not going to generalize here <laughs> we're not going to generalize holy here. fuck we're not going to jump to conclusions but what I will say what I feel very comfortable saying regardless of your skin color is that this person's an asshole and she doesn't give a single damn about her friend Adriana I'll tell you that much no you don't care at all about your friend you call this a close friend so oh. close that this friend thinks that they would be a bridesmaid that is what got me what oh i'm so i'm 
what that right. this is oh. this is how close the friend is that they were expecting to be a bridesmaid to get a, can you imagine that would be like me not inviting you to my wedding yeah and you're like sorry Alejandra like there's a weird history here and I just didn't think you'd appreciate it so you're just not invited what also the fact that you can acknowledge the dark history of your venue and I know that she doesn't want to debate the venue but like you can't do that you can't mm. just say am I the asshole but this one minor details off limits no no no, no it's no, not no. off limits here it's, it's the whole context of the fucking thing it's very critical to the outcome here that is like you know everyone can have an opinion on whether or not we can restore a venue that has a dark history and it can be used for a different purpose moving forward, maybe so, sure. But here's the thing. You have a very, very close friend who you know feels strongly about these things. Yeah. And this is somebody who's been a part of your life and who thought they were going to stand by your side on a very important day for you. And you willingly and knowingly chose a venue that would be harmful to them. You don't care about your friendship. No, not at all. I think the fact, too, that she does also try to separate it because it's not just like, oh, it's a house on a plantation. It's like mm -hmm. a beautiful old mansion house, which used to be next to a plantation. It's like, yeah. no, 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 sweetie. Like yeah. that was the slave owner's mansion. That yeah. was their house. Mm -hmm. It's not just a whole happenstance. It's the neighboring yeah. farm. Yeah. Otherwise you would say something different. Yeah. It, it was the owner's house. Yes. It, there's clearly a significance to the venue location and it has some type of negative history and i wouldn't even want to get married there like, i wouldn't either i mean like, it's hard for me to even put myself there because i wouldn't even want to get married no, there. period no and then if i have a close friend so close like i'm thinking of the grip of people that would be standing next to me on my wedding day and if i thought that any of them would be so hurt and offended by my venue i don't care how great that venue is there's a million other venues yeah so many. Do you know how many mansions there are in yes. this world? And like, oh, it's my dream to get married here. Did she say that? Yeah. Okay. I've been thinking about this since middle school. It's like, oh, and you didn't know the history? Yeah. Also, right. here's the thing. Again, she doesn't want to debate whether or not it's right, wrong. She can't even say that, though. I know. Honestly, she can't. She can't. Uh, she can't. But like, but for I, her even prefacing that right. is such bullshit. It's like, bullshit. You can't even say that. That's you like know me, people are going to come for you. Right. Like, oh, hey, I uh, I cheated on my boyfriend like three years ago. Um, we're not going to debate that, but is it, am I the asshole for like breaking up with him? Like that is a critical detail to the whole picture. You can't just say, we're not going to debate this very important detail, but I want to like put that to the side for just one second. If this is your close friend, can't you sit them down and have a conversation and say, Adriana, I know that this is very near and dear to you and that this may be hurtful, but I want you I want to talk this through with you. Here's the situation. There's a venue. Here's the history. Mm -hmm. I know it's not a history that you agree with. I know that it might be hurtful. As I'm saying this out loud, I don't even know why I'm debating having my wedding here. Like, I don't even <laughs> like the fact that you're Literally. saying all these things like and you still want to have your wedding there, whatever. But you can at least be like, I'm having my wedding here. It's been decided. I really want you to be a part of that day. And I'm going to give you the option because you're one of my closest friends yeah. and you're absolutely invited. But I do know that you may have an opinion and that you may not feel comfortable. And if you don't, I'm, I'm sorry to not have you there, but this is the situation. Yeah. Rather than not invite her and make her wonder and feel so stupid that she didn't get an invite. Dude. One of your close friends, One of right? Your, close, your friends. close friends. And you can't even talk about these things. If you can't have that conversation, then like, are you really friends? Because that seems like the bare minimum, right? Like having that conversation and giving her that openness, that honesty. Yeah. <sighs> I think she can't have that conversation because in order to have that conversation, she has to admit, she has to admit that what she's doing is not, is yeah. really like just fucked up to be honest. Let's just call a spade a spade. Like mm -hmm. to, she's so scared to confront it. So she's avoiding it. Yeah. She doesn't want to have that conversation. It's kind of like, I saw this quote the other day that said, like, they avoid you when they know they've wronged you. Mm -hmm. Like, people who don't apologize or who don't Dude, care yeah. to, like, make something right. Yeah. It's because they know how badly they fucked up. Oh, my God. We have both seen that play out. Totally. With totally different people. Yes. And that, I will say, that is 1,000% true. It is true. They know. They thousand can't, percent. They can't, it's 100%. Yes. A million percent true. And in this situation, I think, I really do think that's what's happening is... We're sitting here perplexed as to why you can't sit down with one of your close friends 
and say, hey, this is the situation. Like, I'll sit one of my friends down and be like, hey, I know that you don't love sushi, but we're going to go for my birthday to like Nobu. And like, you're obviously invited, Morgan, but I know you don't love fish. So like, I get it if you don't want to spend money. It's just common decency, right? It's just what you do. The fact that if you can't even do this for like a wedding shows that you either don't care about this friend at all or you're too scared to have a conversation because it it requires an admission of total ignorance or just absolute being an asshole. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting big self-centered vibes too. Yeah. Yeah. And I get people, you know, not everyone can handle confrontation or yeah. you know whatever, but like I wouldn't even consider this confrontational. Like no. It's just you can start it as an open conversation. It doesn't need to turn into a war right away, right? right? Like, no. I think the fact, too, where she said here, like, um, she asked me if I would reconsider changing my venue because she would love to come, but I told her that after embarrassing me, (sighs) I didn't think she could behave at a wedding. Embarrassing you by having a a normal reaction in a public place, like, you could have had this at your house. You probably chose a public place because you knew how she was going to react. Yeah. I'll, yeah. A lot of comments on this one. Um, people rightfully tore her apart. Everyone picked up on this whole thing. And OP does respond to a couple. Mm-hmm. Top comment, though, is you're the asshole. And then there's this like big, long quote. And it goes, it's my dream to celebrate slavery during my wedding. It's okay for me to do that if I don't invite my black friend, right? <sighs> that's... I mean, I think that that's what OP is reckoning with. Like, she feels like confronting the situation is admitting that yeah uh next comment goes this comment is disallowed op clearly stated she's not here to debate her choice of venue (laughs) you are required to agree that her choice to have the wedding on a plantation is fine because it's her dream next comment i don't know about you but my son's bar mitzvah reception next year is at auschwitz yeah (laughs) that is so like (laughs) (laughs) but it is that is that is the reality. Like yeah. people were murdered on plantations. People were enslaved for hundreds of years, beaten, tortured, killed, yeah. separated from families, raped. Mm-hmm. Like it is not some light history that, oh, but it's a beautiful house. So we're going to lighten the mood by having a wedding. Yeah. Yay. Yay. We're going to rewrite the history. Do you know, do you know, like, just the just the juju that's there. Right. There's a lot of square footage in this world. So oh, there's a lot of real estate. Real estate. Like you let's just <sighs> let's just chalk that one up as an L. Let's just leave that one. It's we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just leave that one there and move on. <laughs> Find another venue. I just <sighs> I, I can't even the devil's advocate me and tries to like rationalize and I'm just not even going to give this person that charity. No, today. like no. just you're an asshole. I'm sorry. You're an asshole. I can't think of a single situation I could ever be in mm-hmm. where I would willingly one, choose that venue, but that's not up for debate. And two, do that to my friend all around. You don't care. You honestly deserve n- no shows at your wedding. Sorry. I don't mm-hmm. wish poorly on anybody, but this person just... It needs to get a grip on reality and that if this is how you treat people, you will not have anybody standing next to you on your wedding day. No. And I love that people are are already RSVPing. No. That's beautiful. I think too, like, I love the fact that, you know, you know, things are headed in like somewhat of a right direction when you have big companies like Pinterest and which... I'm probably saying that wrong because Justin debates me. No, Pinch- I, I like the way you say it. He says Pinterest. No, it's Pinterest. Because the word interest is technically, when people say interesting, that's not how you say the word. Interest. It's interesting. Thank you, no, Justin, if you hear this. Justin, I will voice note you later. Yeah. We, I will <laughs> Just send it. Pinterest. Pinterest. I'm going to. Um, but <laughs> the fact that like there's big companies like The Knot. The Knot makes a lot of money every year promoting wedding venues, having them on their website, this and that. The Knot and Pinterest both are not promoting plantation venues amazing took them off yeah they're done good and maybe i'm sure there's some that slip through the cracks but like to take that stand says a lot i agree and so it's like that's great i love to see that but let's get into some op stuff oh okay yeah let's dive in um so someone goes 
you're the asshole. If you're not black, you don't have a right to celebrate and bring happy memories onto their history. Yes. That land is significant. And as someone who's not affected by the legacy, you don't get to decide how healing happens. You're totally out of line. And that's the comment she responded to and goes, I should have included in the post. I'm not black. I'm white. Totally missing this person's Miss, whole point. Miss ma'am. Miss ma'am. Like just literally you walked right into the point. You there. walked right into it. Oh, she Next. just <laughs> doing no favors for herself. Uh, she did reply to the top comment about like, it's my dream to celebrate slavery during my wedding um, and yeah. goes, it definitely wasn't my dream to celebrate slavery because I didn't even know about the plantation until last year and I won't be celebrating anything about it during the wedding. And someone goes, what? your post says you've known about it since middle school. OP, I've known about the house. I wasn't aware of its history as a plantation. Okay, but now you do. But now you do. So let's realign expectations and move forward with this newfound knowledge. <laughs> like, I don't get it. <laughs> it gets worse. Okay. So the person that posted, like, if you're not black, you don't have a right to celebrate and bring happy memories. They respond back to OP and they go, that's exactly my point. You're not black. You can't celebrate on historically significant land and reclaim that land yep. for positive purposes when it's not significant to you. And OP goes, there are people of all races coming to my wedding, including black people. I just didn't invite Adriana because I knew that she specifically would be uncomfortable because of her views. I, okay. Sounds good. Someone else goes, just to clarify, the mansion on the plantation is part of the plantation, <laughs> often called a plantation house. I'm betting the name of the venue includes that wording. It doesn't have that in the name, and I had never actually visited before. I think but it, now you know. I feel like sis here has to just like... Wake the fuck up. Just take the L. Just say thank you so much and just see yourself out. Like <laughs> it's like the fact that she's going to war with all these people. Like yeah. she thinks she's doing something here and she's just simply not. Nothing. She's doing quite the opposite. And I, I'm almost... I almost dare I say feel bad for her because it's like <laughs> she's so clueless that she doesn't see... She didn't get the point here. Yeah. You know? It is quite wild, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah, yeah. People of all races are coming to my wedding. Oh, my God. Do you God. want an award? Do you want a cookie for being inclusive? <laughs> you had a quota you had to hit or something? Like, did, did you have a diversity quota? Did uh, Also, what? Okay. Also, Whatever. I would never, like, I don't know. I guess, like, for me, I'm like, there's so many other ways you can like relate this like oh I'm having a wedding somewhere in Oklahoma oh it just happens to be one of the nights for the trail of tears yeah. <laughs> like I would never the way you said that I just I just, I'm I'm really mind blown by this whole thing yeah but as a wedding guest like we have a friend that's getting married in less than a month now and we're going yeah. to this venue and stuff like that and it's like I would never in my head think I need to research someone's wedding venue before I go there. Oh. So it's like, yeah, you have all these people of all different races that have, have maybe RSVP'd. Probably didn't yes. even think twice about your venue. I don't, I don't, speaking of, I don't even know where her wedding is. That's how <laughs> like little I look into venues. I might show up and be like, I'll be damned. I'm like, <laughs> where are we? Like, I, I have no idea where her wedding is. I just know a place and a time and I'll be there. It, correct. I just know the general vicinity that's, and the date and I'll show up. And that's how most people are. I would never think like, oh, I need to research this venue to make sure like no. I'm go not going to correct. like a haunted fucking house. Or yeah. I'm not going to a plantation or I'm yeah. not going to a concentration camp. Yeah. I would never in a million years think I personally need to do diligence no. to research the venue. Mm -hmm. That's on the people getting married. I agree. I'm not diligent in your venue. I'm sorry. I've got other things to do. So, yeah, I was thinking that too. Half these people probably don't even know. They don't even know. What the history is. No. You're not. I'm sure you're not advertising it. Oh, my God. And if um, you are, then Jesus, you're even dude. more clueless than I thought. So, this came up on my For You page on TikTok a couple months ago. Maybe weeks ago now. I, my sense of time is really Me bad. Me too. But it was um, a black creator highlighting the fact that there's people on Airbnb offering up places to stay that are on plantations and one of them was actually old slave quarters like the houses the houses that the slaves were in house in and they remodeled or whatever added like added plumbing and shit and they were advertising it as 
Literally, come stay on the plantation and stay in old slave quarters. Airbnb was on It was that? on Airbnb. So this guy, this black creator went on, like, like shed light on it. Obviously, people responded in uproar. Airbnb has since removed listings that are associated with plantations. Yeah, as they should. But the fact it was still up a yeah. couple of weeks ago, 2022. Yeah. I mean— there are, are unfortunately a lot of ignorant and uneducated people in this world mm-hmm. and especially still in 2022. And that's not an excuse. But I the problem that I have with this whole narrative with Dream Girls Wedding is you're like acknowledging this terrible history and you're acknowledging it's like no better, so do better. You you know, so like correct yourself. Mm-hmm. Why are you adding to this fuel? No. Don't support this venue. No, and I did find the TikTok. The username is Lawyer Winton. So Lawyer, W-Y-N-T-O-N. I'll post the link in the description for this episode. But um, it is a Panther Burn. It's at the Panther Burn Cottage at the Belmont Plantation in Greenville, Mississippi. So it's called Plantation. Okay, so the guests know. Yeah. This is an 1830s slave cabin that is up on Airbnb as a bed and breakfast. How do I know that this is slave quarters? Other than just using my eyes to look at it, well, they say it in the listing. Oh my god! Oh, this is the Airbnb. Yeah, thing now. this okay. is the listing. Okay. Um. So like, there's reviews from like guests. Memorable. Highly recommend watching the sunset. We stayed in the cabin, and it was historic but elegant. Historic. What a delightful place to step into history, southern hospitality, and stay a night or two. Are people serious? They're serious. Yeah. And so Airbnb has since removed properties that formerly housed the enslaved and they have no place on Airbnb. But, um, wow. Yeah. It was really bad. The description he, in the TikTok, he posts the description of, you know, what it is. And there's pictures of what they were posting on Airbnb. And it's just, it's crazy. But I will post, um, I'll post the link for the, TikTok that's from him because it is educational and I'm I'm glad Airbnb took off all of those listings because that's you shouldn't be able to profit off of like that at all and like using that in your in your promo is really fucked up moving along so this one is from true off my chest it's titled my husband would choose his girl best friend over me any day I 29 female got married a year ago yesterday My husband, 30 female, I'm just going to go with it and not correct it. Mm -hmm. I, 29 female, got married a year ago yesterday. My husband, 30 female, and I have been together for five years in total. My husband has been best friends with Sasha, 30 female, since they were in diapers. I knew that I never really had a problem with their friendship until my husband and I officially started dating. Sasha would always try and get between us, and every single date we went on, She was there coincidentally, which was relatively annoying because my husband would let her stay with us on all of those dates. Now, yesterday was my wedding anniversary, and my husband forgot since he had a road trip with Sasha. I didn't know about this trip until he said he was leaving. I didn't bother telling him it was our anniversary since he didn't remember, and he would probably still spend the day with Sasha even if he did know. I didn't bother telling him bye. I just walked out and decided I was going to go shopping and do something for myself. I did that, but then his mother called me during the day wishing me a happy anniversary and asked where my husband was because he wasn't answering his phone. I told her the truth about his whereabouts, and he didn't remember our anniversary. She was shocked and told me that she didn't think Sasha and my husband still had feelings for each other. I asked, what did she mean? She said that they did date in high school, but my husband told me that he never did like Sasha romantically. Everything started becoming more clear now. Maybe he did remember our anniversary, but chose not to say anything because he loved Sasha. If he loved her, he could have told me before we got married. I would have been hurt, but I understand feelings, and I know you can't control them. I don't know how to comprehend anything right now. I'm numb, and I don't get it. All I know is that my husband doesn't even love me. Mm, What's her question? True off my chest. Oh, um, I personally wouldn't be in that marriage. I'd be done. Yeah. You I don't, don't remember our first yeah, anniversary? I think that's kind of your, that's <sighs> enough for me. 
I'm surprised. And, you know, everyone has their own relationships, but it really sounds like Sasha has been the third wheel from the beginning. Like, Mm -hmm. she would coincidentally show up on every date. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have gotten past the dating stage. I agree. I'm not third wheeling someone. I don't... I don't want to have to compete with someone for my partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Call mean, me old-fashioned. No, I think that that's right. Um, I think that I just, I, I'm agreeing with you. I don't think I could get past the dating stage. I just think that's something that I have to iron out before I'm like spending the rest of my life with someone is kind of like, what is the dynamic with this person and how do they fit into our relationship? And like, do I feel good about them? And mm-hmm. If the answers are anything less than satisfactory, then I'm not sure why you're getting into that marriage. I think that's enough for me. Like on your anniversary, not only he forgot, but he's spending time with a, I'm assuming this Sasha's a woman. I think they said she's a woman. Yeah. And so OP does, you know, say that her husband's gender and the age, it says 30 female, but mm-hmm. the he, he pronouns are used throughout the rest of the story. So I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not. Yeah. It seems after reading i would say it is a mistake and yeah it meant to be 30 male yeah um yeah but who knows you know right who knows regardless I, I, yeah he's spending your his anniversary with not you <laughs> just let, why aren't they dating honestly yeah. at this point like i'm just wondering like why didn't they date yeah and i get like having close friends of the opposite you know sex or just non like different you yeah. know friends But if you're spending a lot of time with your friend and you're willing to throw important dates Mm -hmm. with your partner out the window, why aren't you just with your friend? Yeah. it's If you feel deep down inside, like in a non-dramatic way that your partner would choose a friend over you, I don't feel like you're in the right marriage. No. I think your marriage is where you choose each other over everybody else. And it sounds like the premise of that's just not even correct. You're already off on the wrong foot, so... Yeah. Top comment on this one is, yo, I bet Sasha remembered your anniversary. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I I have a bunch of questions about Sasha, but I feel like she's not the the focal point here. Because at the end of the day, the relationship is between two people. So it's whatever Sasha wants to do. Sasha wants to be an asshole and perfect purposely plot like some type of hangout to distract him on his anniversary Mm -hmm. that's Sasha but Sasha didn't take a vow and Sasha didn't marry this person yeah it's your husband so I don't really I'm not concerned with what Sasha's intentions are although like she sounds like she sucks it's your husband who's the one who's wronging you directly absolutely you know but obviously it's like be a fucking girl's girl dude like if one of my guy friends starts dating a girl first of all I fall the fuck back like I know that there's a line now. You know, one of my guy friends has a girlfriend now and I know that there's certain things I can't say or do. Not that I was crossing lines before, but it's just even more out of respect. Kind yeah, of absolutely. Backing up a little bit so that you give that person the respect, the new girlfriend, the respect of knowing that, like, listen, you don't have to worry about me. Like, I see you. I respect this. I'm well, and that's like, that's the bare minimum, That's right? the bare minimum. And that doesn't often happen. Right. Which is sad because... You could get a good girlfriend out of one of your guy friends getting a girl friend. Like you could. Yeah. I mean, there's. That's like taking it a step (sighs) further. Like developing your own friendship and being a girl's girl and having a relationship with that person is like even great. But like you don't have to. You don't have to be friends, but you should be respectful. Yeah. Lot of comments and a lot of responses from OP. Mm. Someone goes, when you ignored the red flags, dot, 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 dot. (laughs) And OP goes, love makes you blind, I swear. Uh, Yeah, I agree with that. I do. It does. A lot of support. um, Just saying, OP, you deserve all the happiness in the world. Yeah. Someone goes, this makes me hurt for you. What kind of married man plans a road trip with his female best friend? Yeah. And doesn't even tell his wife. Yeah. No. Let alone on your anniversary. It's all wrong. And OP goes, the men in this generation are really something else. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate the comment. Which... I can't believe that he lied to her about their history. Yeah. And I think that's obviously very intentional. And it sucks that she found out from her mother-in-law being like, oh, well, they dated in high school, but I I thought all those feelings were gone. Yeah, not great. I don't think they are. 
Yeah. Um, he clearly has zero respect for your relationship. I can't even fathom a husband not telling his wife he's going on a road trip. Mm -hmm. You know damn well that Sasha knows it's your wedding anniversary and she planned this. Mm -hmm. OP, thank you for the advice. And in all honesty, this is my last straw. I'm currently waiting for him to arrive so I can speak to him about this. I feel like also with these things... Sometimes you convince yourself that they'll get better. Like, I'm yeah. sure that we, she we'll was, get married and we'll get married and she'll fade away into mm -hmm. the darkness. And she'll, Sasha will get her partner and Sasha will be occupied and we'll build a family and he won't have time. Like, it's like we can joke that she ignored the red flags and maybe she did. But I think maybe part of her thought that that would just fizzle out or that she would take a bigger role in his life. Mm -hmm. You just kind of convince yourself that things will work themselves out. Yeah. Someone goes, it's time for the ultimatum, her or you, especially since the other bitch cannot respect boundaries. He <laughs> is not a single man who can do whatever. And on your anniversary, fuck all that. I take some notes from Petty Revenge page and honestly, fuck them both. <sighs> take his credit cards, go shopping, then file for divorce. Oh my God. OP is clearly the bigger person here, which yeah. I love, 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 love her response. She goes, in all honesty, why should I even give him an ultimatum? It should have been me anyway. Uh -huh. I was just going to say, I, I don't ever want to have to get to that point. There's, wow. Yeah. It should have always been you. And he kind of chose. He did. So he absolutely. what's did. the point of giving somebody a second shot at the ultimatum that they failed the first time? And, and just, she puts it so beautifully, yeah. right? Like yeah. it, sh it shouldn't be an ultimatum. It should have been me. I, I'm first choice. He Period. married me. Yeah. I am the choice. Yeah. That's I'm a, his wife. That is a good point. I am the choice. Like, what? A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, there is one comment that goes, this is absolutely brutal. What are you thinking you'll do next? My opinion is divorce. Why stay with someone like that? And OP goes, my next step is talking to him. And I genuinely think that divorce is the next option. It's hard, right? Because divorce is, you know, a very serious thing. Not something to be thrown around lightly. But in, in this case, you feel like you're not the priority and that you said in the opening line that your husband would pick somebody before you. Mm -hmm. Man, I think I think you do need to trend in that direction. I agree. Time to be done. Yeah, I, I would be done. I don't think I could handle that. Mm -mm. I think that wound would be so... I think at that point, I would almost... And I'm not like a petty person in relationships with... But I wouldn't... I don't, I don't know. I'd feel like they're constantly digging themselves out of a hole. Nothing could ever make that right. To no. Me. Well, no matter how you proceed forward, yeah. if the option is, well, I'll, I won't see Sasha as much. Mm. Is he going to resent you for that? Is he going to say, you know, Sasha, my wife doesn't like you. I can't yeah. see you. Like, is all of that going to fall on OP then? Yeah. Because that's not fair. So I think, honestly, obviously proceeding forward here is really tough. Mm -hmm. And Divorce isn't easy, but something here is not right. And uh, someone does make a comment about therapy, and OP just kind of says, therapy is a nightmare. I prefer these strangers over a therapist any day. My therapy has been nothing but more traumatizing. I've heard that from some people, actually. Yeah, well, and OP does give some context that um, they grew up in the foster system. And mm. so I think just yeah. maybe with that history, there's there's some trauma there, but... Yeah. <sighs> but it's also like he obviously has an affinity for Sasha, whether it's romantic or it's just a very deep rooted friendship, whatever it is, he has very strong feelings and he really enjoys her companionship mm -hmm. one way or another. Yeah. Therapy doesn't like knock you out of that. Like it's not going to change his feelings towards yeah, Sa like Sasha. He might he's not he's a grown man. He knows what right from wrong. You might be able to establish some very clear boundaries, perhaps, and maybe he'll abide by them, but he's not going to shut off his feeling towards Sasha. He's still going to wish he was hanging out with Sasha. So why? Why stay in this marriage on Friday night when he's sitting next to you and he's thinking about what he could be doing with Sasha? I am kind of, I'm just really blown away by this. And I'm I'm kind of wondering to myself, like, in her, if I was in her shoes, and I, I trust Justin so much, and... I'm just thinking, I was like, would I be okay with him taking a th weekend road trip with a girlfriend and getting one hotel room? And like, yeah, because like is OP, like, how do we know they have two beds <laughs> do they, do, when this, they go on these road trips? Like, what yeah. are they doing? I mean, this is a tough one because <sighs> you can trust somebody 
but it's almost not even about trust. It's, it's about like, respect. It's about respect. It's disrespectful. It's just disrespectful. It's and super it's also, strange. It's also the narrative. Like, I know you don't owe people an explanation, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to explain to everyone that your boyfriend or husband's just on a road trip with another girl. Like, that's just kind of a hard one to like, on, doesn't roll off the tongue. On brunch. your anniversary. Yeah. Like just shooting the shit with your girlfriends. Oh, where's Tom? Like my imaginary boyfriend. Where's Tom? Yeah. Oh, he's on a road trip with Ashley. What? Oh, no, I trust him. It's like, yeah, girl, great. But like, mm, and it's your yeah. anniversary, please. I can't believe she didn't tell him. But like, I honestly wouldn't either. You're so hurt. What's it going to do? No, and I think it honestly, it's it sucks because it, it does show like his his true character, his true, his true, like not obligations. That's not the right word, but like yeah. we're not, oh my God, what am I searching for? Where like his alliance lies or where his, his, where priorities. his priorities. That's what I was looking for. It shows where his priorities lie. That's, and, yeah, that's my point. Therapy doesn't like, you that's can't like change realign that. that in therapy. Like no. if you want to be with someone and you crave their companionship, that will hold true mm -hmm. regardless of like a therapy session. Yeah. And that's so heartbreaking. I don't know what I would do. I would be broken if I, it were my I would too. anniversary and my man was hanging out with some girl. He wouldn't stand for it. I would have flipped. I would have flipped out. I wouldn't. He wouldn't have gone on the trip. I would have. I wouldn't have been able to keep my You'd composure. Slash the tires. No, I just would have been like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" On our, it's our anniversary. Do you not realize that? Mm. But I do see the point of like, no, let him show let his him. true colors let him. because that conversation when he gets back, as you sit down and say, "Do you realize what this weekend was? Yeah, this was our first anniversary, yeah. and yet you one didn't remember. Yeah, uh, important date for us in our relationship, and two you chose instead to spend it with your friend. I think that's a perfect way to go about it. Let them, and then when it's done, be like, that was a very important day. Mm -hmm. And some would argue, but you didn't even give him a chance to make it right. He already he fumbled. Blew it. Like, he fumbled the ball. You the can pick it up. But yeah, you just, you have to. I think in that, in that position, I mean, it's already, it's been done. The damage yeah. has been done. What do you want him to do? Flip a bitch, take a U-turn and come home with some half-assed flowers? He already forgot. Like, it's done, you know? It's solid. It's done. Yeah. So. <sighs> I just feel so bad for her. I know. It's a bummer. And this happens quite a bit. Guys and girls forget about anniversaries. I forgot about my anniversary one year. Really? Yeah, it was really bad. I have two anniversaries, technically. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Must be nice. I have zero. Well, because I told Justin, I... He asked me to be his girlfriend one time and I said no. Mm -hmm. And then so it was kind of in my court after that to like be like, okay, I'm ready. Like, yeah. I'll be your girlfriend. So um, on the 27th of December, I was like, okay, I'm tired of correcting people yeah. and saying you're my friend, Justin. Like we've been together dating at this point for a couple months now, like yeah. whatever. I was like, we can be dating. Oh. And I was like, but I don't want the 27th as our anniversary because that's hard to remember, right? Like, no. Hmm. December 27th? So I was like, can we just wait until the first to be official? Because I want the first to be our actual anniversary date. Oh. But, so I'd have two. I think that's fine. He goes by the 27th. He goes by. Yeah, I we, would too. We do. I would too. That, it's like symbolic. <laughs> like I'm so weird, you guys. I'm, right, so that's like you having a baby and being like, I don't really like odd numbers. So we're going to pretend he was born on the 8th. I know. I should have kept my mouth shut for a couple days. Yeah, you should have been like, let me sit on this one. Oh, the ball was totally in my court. I know. Let me sit on it three more days, four more days. Yeah. No, he he absolutely loves the way I did it. We were like staying yeah. at this like hotel in Duluth called Pier B. My absolute favorite place if you're ever traveling to Duluth, Minnesota. The amenities are amazing. They give you s'mores. I'm sure kids. that's on a lot of people's lists. It's so good. Hey, don't <laughs> shit on Duluth. I'm not shitting on Duluth. I love Duluth. You know I love Duluth. You it's watch just, it, lady. I No, I'm just saying like <laughs> it's not a, like a destination. It is. Trust me. I have nothing against Duluth. I love Duluth. My family has a cabin in Lutzen. It's good. I love um, it. But yeah, I like just walked in because my brother was like, okay, Morgan, like you, like he kept saying like all night, like, oh, like Morgan's boyfriend, Justin, like uh, I'm hanging out. Someone called and he's like, I'm hanging out with my sister Morgan and her boyfriend. Mm. And I walk up in the hotel room and I just look at him. I'm like, I'm really tired of correcting people. Mm. And he just says like that feeling. He's like, oh my God. So yeah. it all worked out. Here it we are. Out. There you go. It's almost four years later. Oh yeah, almost. Pretty wild. Yeah. We've like our um our meeting anniversary, we just celebrated like four years. So you celebrate meeting anniversaries too? So you've like three? Yeah. 
wow, I'm like really the worst girlfriend in the world. I'll, I only had one and I forgot dude, it. Dude, I celebrate getting mail. I call mail presents. Like I just give me a reason to celebrate anything. Yeah, but like I have like too much on my mind. Like I forgot my three year anniversary. It's like the date has come around a couple times now. There's like, it's yeah. not like my first year and I forgot. But maybe that was your subconscious telling you it wasn't right. No, the relationship still went on for another year. It maybe was your brain knew long before. No, that's just me being a complete <laughs> dumbass. Like I'm not going to be a great wife. I know that. I'm going to be like that shitty wife. You know those shows? <laughs> you know those shows? So you're going to be this guy for getting anniversaries? No, not like that. I'm not going to be like fucking around with on a road trip with some guy. But like, you know those shows where... The wife is just very, I'm trying to think of like a character. Preoccupied? Just, just very, no, just very degaff. Like they're just like, don't give a fuck. Like, mm. oh, yeah. Took me a second to register that know. one. Yeah, like I can't, I'm going to think, I know there's a show I've seen where I'm like, I'm going to be that mom. Like I can just tell that I'm just going to be very like, oh shit, it's our five year in a row. Oh my God. Like I'm not like sentimental like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a character like that on Big Little Lies? I was thinking of working moms, but I can't. Yeah, the, the redhead is kind of like that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I, I love that show. I know I love I, that show. It's a I good, gotta get back in. I it. love that show, but I don't know. I'll think of the character. I, and I'm not saying I'm a shitty person. I'm like not a shitty person, and like whatever. But I just know based on my history, I feel like <laughs> all of my boyfriends have been like the loving ones who like, and I'm just kind of like. I'm a little cold, you know? So I don't know. It just doesn't translate well. No, you're very thoughtful. You just, I think, honestly, I think, I think you don't give your subconscious enough credit. No, I just, I think I just know myself. <laughs> I think I just, I'm aware enough to know my flaws. <laughs> okay, put it in your iPhone and uh, set up for a yearly reminder that really pings you. What? My anniversary? The next one you get. Okay. And when that happens, yeah. I'll be sure to do that. You never know. Could be next week. You could meet someone. Some people meet people and they're married 12 days later. Don't you just see that for me? Honestly, I could see it. That's disgusting. I, I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibilities. That's I mean, all technically, I'm saying. that's in everyone's realm of exactly. possibility. No, you're, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, okay, next one. Am I the asshole for sending an invoice to my wife's cousin after she, quote, didn't have space for us at her wedding? Wow. I own a printing company that I run with my wife. Her cousin came to us and wanted us to do all the signage, banners, guest books, life-sized cutouts, etc. for her wedding. We do this all the time for friends' weddings and events, and we never charge. We're happy to help out, and it's usually a lot of fun working together to make some cool stuff. A few weeks before the wedding, her wedding planner tells us they need all of the items by X date so they can set it up for the wedding. At this point... We hadn't received our wedding invitations and didn't even know when the actual wedding was. My wife texts her and tries to clarify when the wedding is and if we miss the invitation somehow. Her cousin replies and says, quote, Oh, we downsized the wedding and we have decided to have like a close friends and family thing, end quote. And they didn't have space for us in the small venue. My wife and I are pretty hurt and insulted, and on top of it, we've spent close to $2,000 on all of the materials. Her cousin and the wedding planner kept making tiny revisions to the artwork, had us print samples to see how it would look in person, resize several of the items a few times, etc. All that cost a ton of time and money, and we're a functioning business, so we either had to delay other orders or stay late and print her stuff on our own time. So I went ahead and billed her for our cost and said we needed payment before delivery because I'm not going to chase her down for payment for months slash years after the wedding. We're not making money on it, just charged her for the cost of materials. So far, we've gotten threatening calls from the cousin, her fiance, some random members of my wife's family that I don't know, some of the groomsmen, etc., essentially calling us assholes. After the harassment, I'm considering charging full price or else we won't deliver the items. Are we assholes here? Sorry, but I'm not going to waste my hard-earned time and money on someone who doesn't even consider us, quote, close friends and family. So was the understanding that they were going to get it for free originally? It seems like it was expected. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. No, like, clear-cut answer yeah. based on that, but it, it feels like it was expected to be free. I 
might be missing a detail, but I don't think that he's an asshole for that. Not at all. I don't think you should ever expect anything for free unless it's explicitly said. I mean, there's certain situations where it's just a given. You know that this is a gift. You know that this is something that's being covered. But Mm -hmm. in this situation, I mean, I don't think they're misreading it at all. And I think that it's really shitty that they didn't even catch an invite to this wedding. Like, even more so, okay, that this is more transactional than I actually originally thought. I think they should charge for sure. Absolutely. It is a transaction. It's a transaction to them. You're not even guests at their wedding. No. Even if they were, I think I would still argue that doesn't me the that cost. doesn't like um free you of that cost. I would agree with that. I think honestly the fact that they were willing to do it for free just for like and like you, your family, like I would assume that I'm getting yeah. invited to my cousin's wedding next year. Like that's yeah. I think that's a fair assumption yeah. to make with family. Um and so like you know that's that's above and beyond in yeah. kindness to give them free product time labor all, like all of that i don't even think i would ex- i would even accept that from my family member i think like mm-hmm. getting it at cost mm-hmm. i would never want to see them pay two thousand dollars or mm-hmm. whatever the number is for me and my all my shit for my wedding yeah like them offering their time and their services free of charge like incredible but i'm at least going to pay for the materials yeah especially if i'm being a high maintenance needy little shit revisions can you print it can you redo this yeah what the fuck yeah i agree i think it's totally fair yeah i think it's i think it's fair to bill for it oh yeah your work is your work and you are a fully functioning business as as op says these people didn't really think i mean i get it you run out of room that's fine but you didn't make the cut for them which just signifies the relationship that they have with you is not as deep as you thought. And so fully fair to charge. Exactly. I think at that point, you're yeah. a vendor at this point. I, you are. You're a 100%. vendor. percent What separates you from a, a different vendor? Nothing. No other vendors getting an invite? No. Same. Yeah. And even, again, even if you did get an invite, like... I wouldn't want to go anymore. No, I'm saying... Oh, yeah. Even yeah. if they had gotten an invite... Like, let's just say you were, like, a pastry chef. And I invite... Obviously, you're, like, in my wedding, whatever... And then you you just say, hey, Alan, I'm going to like bring like some desserts to your wedding. Be like, let me know what I owe you. Like if you're a fully functioning pastry business, let me know what the cost will be. And like, no, 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 it's, it's on me. It's a wedding gift. Okay, that's different. But like if you fully own a shop and you're going to be bringing a service, like you should not just ed- expect mm-hmm. that it's free. Yeah. Unless it was premised as like, this is a gift to you. Like, da, da, da. I feel like so many people do though. I saw this TikTok right? of this girl just- that was, it was actually up for debate where... I, okay, so essentially, it was this the the, the OP, the TikTok creator, mm-hmm. was like, I have this client who always buys cakes for me, da 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 da, a, a regular. One day, she like gets a cake for me and she invites me to book club with her girlfriends. Hey, come to book club next next Thursday. Okay, okay, well, cool. So she thinks like I'm getting They're an friends, invi- yeah. Yes. Mm. And then she's like, bring one of your delicious cakes. So, I mean, this one was actually really like tossed up. But this person Damn. shows up with a cake and then invoiced them. And or Ooh. like hits her with an invoice and she was like, wait, what? Like, why am I paying for this cake? But it it was the banter was like, she did tell you to bring a cake. And since she regularly buys cakes from you, it's kind of fair to assume that she was meaning like make oh. a cake and I'll pay for it. Because she's bought cakes from you before and you don't have really this pre-existing relationship. But then the other camp was like, this was an invite to try to be friends. And the least you could do was just like bring a cake as a gesture. That's the camp I'm in. It's it weird. is. It's, yeah. But she was like, is, am I an asshole for invoicing her? And it's like, it was really truly you gotta like You got to get split. there and read the room. Yeah. It was split. Because I wouldn't, I think like ordering a cake, I guess maybe it was the way that she put it where she's like, bring one of your cakes yeah. where it could have been like, uh, we usually all kind of like potluck and bring stuff. Yeah. Feel free to bring whatever. Yeah, that wasn't it. Like your cakes are really good if you yeah, want to bring one. That's of those. different. No, it wasn't it's, that. It's all about that delivery. Yes. So it was like bring, bring, bring those cakes you make, or like bring that one cake, or it was ooh, very. That's like, really tough. It is tough because that's you're really like, tough. is that an order? Like, I don't know. I really was torn on that one. Ooh. I personally wouldn't invoice because I'm like, I wouldn't. I would. Yeah. I wouldn't have, but I don't necessarily think it was out of pocket to invoice. I think I would have in that moment asked for more clarification and just. 
but it's like, oh, you're getting an invite. You don't want to like, yeah. ah, rock you don't the wanna, boat, you right? Don't spoil it, yeah. But I feel like I would have been like, oh, do people typically bring stuff? Is it a potluck? Yeah. Like d- dessert or should I bring something yeah, else? Like, yeah. and then if it, I don't know. Like you kind of have to weed it out. But I guess I probably would have showed up and just with the simplest fucking cake you can make. For sure. And then like this one's on the house. And then next time I'll tell her, hey, like, you know. I'm not going to bring a cake every week. Yeah. Because then it's kind of like, oh, you just invited me to your book club for my cakes. Yeah. Or, yeah, or see if she pays you. And if she doesn't. Then you know. Then you know. Next time, just say, hey, like, I don't, on my days off, like, I don't want to make it. Whatever you have to say. Yeah. Then now you know. It's, so it was definitely very awkward. And I guess, the, and the, another argument too was like, this person's a regular client. Like they clearly buy cakes from you. Like the it's a good sign of goodwill. Like you bring a cake to the book That's club. That's also really true. Like you might've just lost a good pain. I think she did. I, yeah. That's awkward. I know. Cause the person was taken back. They were like, what do you mean? Like what? Well, and it, that to me seems like a gesture of like, hey, I really enjoy you. Yeah. I know we have limited interaction, but like a book club is a great place to start. Yeah. To work on friends. Yeah, I definitely would have invoiced. I would have brought it and then yeah. like read the room and like if I was the only one bringing the cake you and no invoiced? one else. No, no, no. I just wouldn't have probably gone back because then it's kind of like, well, did you invite me only for the cakes? And if that's how you feel after leaving, then like it didn't make you feel good. So yeah. don't go back. But yeah, it's a good point. It is your time. It is your energy. But also that seems like it wasn't, that seems like it was a nice gesture to be like, hey, let's be friends. It does. But also like the bring, she could have just said come to book club, period. No, bring your cake. Yeah. That's where I think it's like... So, like total miscommunication on it's, both It's them. kind of like the, hey, do you want to go take like a Pilates class tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Can you drive? <laughs> like, okay, my car is being repaired. Can you drive? You know, that's yeah. kind of the vibe I get where it's like... I want to know how that one resolved. <laughs> Which one? That. Oh, the cake. Yeah. Oh, you can probably Google it. I think it went kind of viral. I need to find that one. It was like cake book club. I, and it might have not been book club. It might have been like bridge or something. It was some oh type of God. gathering, but I think it was book club. Yeah. I thought that one was hard. I went back and forth. And the comments were like very kind of split and making great arguments on both. And I'm like, that's tough. I mean, that's happened. I can't think of a specific example, but like. That's happened to me where even like girls nights, right? And it's like, oh, everyone brings food or wine. And there's been nights where everyone just brings something and that's it. And then there's been nights where we're all like, okay, like, let me know what I owe you. Like Venmo, you know what I mean? And sometimes yeah. you really don't know. Mm-hmm. And it kind of sucks because it's like, well, if I had known, I wouldn't have gotten this $50 bottle of wine that I was going to just pay for myself. I thought we were all splitting. You know what I mean? I know. So it's kind of, you know, mismanaged expectations. I think so. It's very yeah. miscommunication. Well, we've always been all really good about like, like when we would do girl stuff, we'd always be like, kind of like expecting that we're all sharing and going in on it. Yeah. So that's, but I know that that's not always the case. I know. It was, really on it was on TikTok. on TikTok. I can't find it I'll see if based I can find on it. Um, Googling search, a bunch of different things. So if anyone sees it, please yeah. send it my way. If Alejandra can't find it. <laughs> I'll try. A uh, lot of comments from OP on this one. And someone goes, not the asshole. They used you. Look at how much <laughs> money they saved. Yeah. $2,000 is not a normal wedding gift. I suggest from now on you ask to be paid, but give a discount. You shouldn't end up in the red because of a gift unless you can write it off. Mm-hmm. Ask yourself if they never intended to invite you and just wanted free services. Yeah. And OP goes, it usually ends up being a couple hundred dollars max. The constant revisions and reprints jacked the price up considerably. We were still at the awkward stage where we couldn't exactly tell them, quote, hey, this is getting kind of expensive. What? That's where you I'm can like, always tell someone yeah, that. Yeah, that's where you got to kind of like put your adult pants on and mm-hmm. communicate because like in this world, if you don't advocate for yourself, no one's advocating for you in your business. You have to advocate for yourself. Yeah. And that's where I think I'm not like blaming OP or anything, but I do think you have to take a little bit of responsibility and say, hey, you know, we were planning on giving you like a massive discount or this was going to be a wedding gift from us. However, it's starting to get it's too expensive. It's starting to get very expensive and beyond the price point that we were comfortable with. So we're so happy to still do this for you. Just know that after a certain threshold, we will have to invoice. Uh, yeah. Especially after all the revisions. it's That's an easy point where if they keep asking for revisions, you can yeah. say, hey, you know what? Like These revisions are really jacking up your price. Yeah. Going forward, we're going to have to charge for everything else because we're hitting the $1,500 mark or we're hitting yeah. the $1,000 mark. And that's, yeah. that's extensive for us. Yeah. And just this is out of the norm for us. This is not our typical. We're kind of like 
going, we're kind of doing like double, double back clicks for you guys here. And so we can't do it at a huge discount because mm-hmm. it's already more work than we would traditionally do when someone's paying full price. Yeah. But again, like it's, it's easy for us to sit here and say that. And I know it's so much more awkward when you're in that position and you don't want to rock the boat and you don't want to make people feel bad. For sure. But I just think that a lot of heartache can be saved with some with a little bit of awkward communication can mm-hmm. save like a lot of awkward aftermath. Oh my God. You know, so. <laughs> Speaking of communication, um, the fact that everyone else is getting involved too is crazy. I think the, yeah. gro- the groomsmen, like, yeah, you got some loyal friends there. So someone actually brings it up though and they go, what exactly are they threatening you with? Give us free shit or we'll call the cops? Yeah. And OP goes, the groomsmen are messaging me with frat bro garbage, like, quote, you're not going to fuck up our boy's wedding. Everyone else is saying how we made it about us and now the bride has to deal with this, etc. Nothing of substance. You can't make it about you if you weren't invited to a wedding. (laughs) They're not. (laughs) You're literally just charging for what you've done, which is completely fair. Completely fair. $2,000 is like. That's crazy. That's way more expensive than a wedding gift. Yeah. And this is this comment. It's really sad. So someone goes, also, what is your wife's stance on this since it wasn't mentioned? Not the asshole regardless. And OP goes, she's devastated. She's the most generous person I know. And she gets so much joy out of helping friends and family with their special events. They kept trying to guilt her and made vague threats. So I took over the messaging. That's when the groomsmen stepped in. Total disaster, man. Oh, that hurts because it's always the people who are so generous and kind that could take an advantage of. They they felt like they could take advantage of them. And it's so sad. It's so sad. I hate that. Well, that's all I got for you on this episode of Two Hot Takes. <laughs> You're just like for is like the is the Harley Davidson and the Apple Cider just dictating your persona now? Yeah. Pretty you just much. merged into the I know. Look dad. at the way I have my arm on this You're chair, literally, too. you became a dad. Yeah, I don't know what's happening with me. I'm so out of it. I feel like I still haven't recovered from the jet lag from Iceland. And like, I don't know. It's really weird. Usually, hmm. I don't get jet lag. Yeah, I don't either. But like this time, I got rocked. That's interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't get jet lagged. So it's hard for me to imagine. It's a real bitch. Yeah. It's a real I'm bitch. Sure. But I don't uh, know what you do. What do you do? What are you supposed to do? You just keep pushing through. You just keep I've going. heard when I came back from Europe, I was really nervous about getting jet lagged, especially because I was Yeah, uh, food poisoning from hell. I had food poisoning from hell, but I also had to get on a plane twenty four hours later, another international flight. So I was really Dude. worried about getting jet lagged. I know. And then after that one, I had to go to our live show. So it was one thing after the other. And I asked for advice because I was scared I was going to get jet lagged. And what everybody said is to get on the time zone. That's the best thing you can do for mm-hmm. your body. I didn't need to do it. In fact, I was in three different time zones. But like, <sighs> you have to just, I'm like, which one? Which like, one do I pick? Which one? Nah, but Flip a coin. Yeah. I don't know. You probably just need rest. I do. I, um, I've i been recording a lot of episodes to try to get ahead for the holidays. Yeah. And our upcoming live show, speaking of it, uh, By the time this episode comes out, tickets will be on sale. So we are doing two live shows, one of which is Friday, December 2nd, which will be in person in Los Angeles, California at the Bourbon Room. And then Sunday is going to be live stream with Moment. So pick and choose what you're able to do, but super excited to have you guys there. And the live stream will be really fun. I think we're going to make gingerbread houses <laughs> for the after party. So it'll be really good. I can't believe it's the holiday season. This year flew by. Yeah. I, 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 we say that every year, but like. This year felt unnaturally I fast. I agree. I agree. And I can't figure out why. I cannot figure out why. I think we were all doing double time to Do make up so? for like the past couple from COVID. That could be like our run rate was a lot faster. I think I, people did so much this year. Yeah. I'm finding that like everyone right now is like already burnt out and ready to like stop. I'm burnt out. I'm so burnt out. Mm-hmm. I On my way here, I picked up a bar of chocolate because I'm literally a freak and I have to have chocolate like every single day. That's, and That's normal. It's not that I've never met anybody with such a chocolate You're craving. a chocoholic. I'm a chocoholic, 100%. <laughs> and the flavor is gingerbread. It's a So I, I get this brand called Hue Chocolate. Oh my God, that sounds so good. They're super good. Do you bring it here? Uh, it's in my car. <laughs> I know. No, you got me a pumpkin cheesecake. I'm going to go eat that. Oh, yeah. You have a pumpkin. I'm going to go eat that. And a salted caramel one. Oh, my God. Anyway, they did gingerbread. And I was like super excited because I'm like, yeah, it's a holiday collab flavor. I'll get you one next time. And I ate it. But to be honest with you, I'm actually glad you're not eating it because where I'm going with this is it tasted 
exactly like Christmas. And it's too soon. Oh. Um, too soon. We're no, still I'm on pumpkin ready. spice. No, trust me. It was too soon. Mm. It's too soon. I'm so ready for baking Christmas cookies with my grandma. I know. Those cookies just, go hard. Oh, they're so good. That's so exciting. I, I love, know. I love the holiday season. I'm so excited to bake and make cute. I was thinking for an episode we should make some holiday cocktails. Oh yeah. I think that would be great. I'd love to see people's recipes. I my usual go to <gasps> is like mulled wine. That'd be fun. But I'd love to see what everyone else yeah. would like pick for us. Yeah, so. pick an uh, pick a I want to do like a cocktail, like Santa's like something fancy. Soda. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something fancy that yeah. takes some effort. Yes. Garnish. I, yeah. A little garnish. I can't do vodka, so consider that when you're throwing out your Let's recipes. Just do tequila. Would you do gin? I love gin. Okay, gin pairs very well with the holiday drinks. Oh my God, I had the best um, gin cranberry cocktail last year. So, mm. so good. Yeah, drop, send your favorite holiday spritzes because I think that would be so fun. That'd be so little, fun. And like cute little glasses and garnish. Oh my God. That'd be amazing. Yeah, for sure. And holiday sweaters. Okay, well, we both need to go to freaking bed. <laughs> so, thank you guys all for being here. I just... I can't believe we're like at the end of the year almost. It's like, crazy. This will be crazy. It's almost November. It's almost November. This will come out in November. So it's like by the time this comes out, there's only like a month and a half left. And it's like, I just can't believe everything we've accomplished this year. And I'm just so thankful for all of you. <laughs> and so I just, I love you guys. So thank you. Thank you for being here. And on that note, until next time. Sorry, hit the <laughs> mic. <laughs> That's how tired I am. Good night. Bye, guys.